Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today it's time for um, quick watercolour tip number six. This is a fairly new series and I've had some wonderful feedback that a lot of you have found it really useful with tips like how to create a reliable dry brush stroke, um, what to do if your dry brush goes wrong, uh, various things like that. And I'll be continuing into 2024 with more handy watercolour tips. So today I'm going to be talking about how to protect your brushes from masking fluid um, when you want to use the sort of latex liquid gum mask that we use to protect the white of the paper in watercolour painting. The painting that you can see here was a demo from a little while ago, which I will link to in the description below, painting this beautiful coastal scene with these lovely bright summer flowers um, and then looking down over the cliff top down to the bay below. The flowers um, were protected by painting um, the little flower shapes with masking fluid. And this masking fluid um, creates a waterproof barrier um, as it dries on the paper so you can paint freely over it and then you can carefully remove the masking fluid once you finish painting to reveal the white of the paper where you've painted it and that enabled me to paint over the flower shapes with really lovely bright clean colours. It would have been really difficult just to paint around all those little shapes as I was painting um, so the masking fluid can be really useful but as useful as it is I suppose probably most of us have ruined a few brushes um, trying to clean the latex masking fluid out of our brushes after we've used them. The problem is it kind of welds itself to the fine brush hairs and apart from cutting it out no amount of coaxing will remove it from the brush once it's set. Now here's my masking fluid. Um, I don't recommend any particular brand. I use Pebio, but Windsor & Newton do one. I think most, um, most art supply companies will have their own brand. And this one is tinted blue, which is useful because then you can see where you've put it. Whereas the um, white ones, you sometimes can't see that um, when you're painting it on the paper. So I like the Pebio brand. But here's one of my many brushes that I've ruined over the past few years. And... You can't really see it that clearly here, but I'm hoping I can show you that the tips are sort of welded together in places with little rubbery crumbs of the masking fluid. So to all intents and purposes, the brush is ruined. But the most important tip I can give you, as well as the tip I'm about to give you, is never use your best brushes for masking fluid, even if you use this tip that I'm going to give you, because there's still a sort of slight risk that you might get a bit of fluid buildup in your ferrule or in your brush. So my first tip is to either use an old brush that you're not too worried about or to buy a dedicated, really cheap brush from a discount store. Um, as long as it's got a good point, it'll be perfect for the application of masking fluid. So now for the main tip. The main tip is, is that you can use um, soap to protect the hairs of your brush from the masking fluid setting into it. Um, you can use a brush soap. Here's just a bar that looks like ordinary soap, but it's brush soap by Cornelison and, and Son. And you just wet it up as per normal, like normal soap, and use it to clean your brushes. Or there are other products, for example, like this little pot of the Masters. Um, where is it? I'll just find it for you. Um, oh, here it is. Yep, yeah, the Masters uh, brush cleaner and preserver. And this is exactly the same. It's kind of a creamy um, soap-like um, substance that you, again, clean your brushes with. Now, we can use this um, to protect uh, our brushes. So before you dip into your masking fluid, um, then take some soap. This is ordinary hand soap. It's just an ordinary bar of fairly natural soap or your brush cleaner. Wet up your brush. Um, and then just wet the brush hairs all the way through first um, and wet the soap up a little bit as well. And then just rub um, the bristles gently 
into the soap, backwards and forwards. You're trying to work the soap all the way through the head of the brush, sort of right up to the sort of where the hairs come out of the ferrule. And basically the soap then will protect your brush. You can still bring it to a fine point so that when you dip into your masking fluid, um, then you will uh, just pick it up over the top of the soap which is protecting the hairs and that will stop the masking fluid from um, ruining your brush. And it's a good idea to not dip over the ferrule so the masking fluid just stays on the hairs and doesn't go onto the metal because sometimes then that can get lodged up inside the ferrule and it's really difficult to clean. And that should keep your brush in perfect condition um, for short applications of masking fluid. If you've got a, a large area or an awful lot of masking fluid to apply, it's a good job to do it in a few stages um, to apply some, then go and wash your brush out with more soap, uh, fill it full of soap and then dip it back in again. And that brings me to the last bit of this tip, which of course is once you have, as soon as you've finished applying the masking fluid and apply it as quickly as you can, then go to the sink and wash it out of the hairs but using a lot more of the brush soap. And then once you've finished removing all of the masking fluid from the brush then again dip the brush lightly into um, the soap again and just leave a little bit of soap in your dedicated masking fluid brush and that will just condition it and keep it sort of ready and prepped for the next time you need to use it. And just one last thing before I go, you can, funnily enough, um, you can use the fact that masking fluid can ruin a brush to your advantage. You can actually use it to modify a brush and there's no going back from this because the masking fluid will completely um, wreck the brush, so to speak, but you might want that. Now this is what I call my ugly brush. And this brush has been splayed out and dipped into the latex masking fluid. You can see it's absolutely solid and it's got these really raggedy shapes. Now you could imagine that using this to apply paint would give you some really random marks, um, some really scratchy sort of loose tree shapes and things like that. So if you do end up wrecking a brush or two from masking fluid, don't throw them out. Just think if you can modify them and maybe dip them back into more masking fluid and sort of splay out the hairs and use them as texture brushes. Well I hope that's been useful. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments and if you have any tips that you can share with viewers. We love to read them and why not subscribe to our channel if you like to see more tips like this. Take a look at the playlist um, for um, quick watercolour tips and come back to see more demos um, covering a wide range of subjects. Well thank you so much for watching, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and thank you so much to everyone that follows us on Patreon and supports the channel there, we really do appreciate you. I'll see you again soon, take care and happy painting. Bye.